is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro with the latest Cherry Swiss version 3.7 official build based on Android 12.1 and this is the 8th May 2022 build of course I have used the latest Orange Fox recovery to flash this ROM and if you don't know how to flash a custom ROM on your Redmi K20 Pro you can check out the card or the description so right now let me just quickly show you the about section this is how it looks like we have the Cherry Swiss logo up top and we have the Android version as Android 12 L and we have the Cherry's version as 3.7. Security patch is latest of May 5th, 2022. If you scroll down more, we have the stock kernel as the Soviet star kernel. The build date here is 5th May, 2022. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. Of course, we have the Gboard as the default keyboard over here. You shouldn't worry about that. Let me go to the pop-up camera settings. And here, this is great that we are getting this camera calibration for the front camera. And if your motor is stuck or something, of course, the K20 Pro has a motorized front camera. So if it's stuck, you can fix that with this particular option. And we have the pop-up camera sounds and you get these mini sound effects. And of course, we have the camera LED and the front camera raised dialogue and stuff. Let me go back to the gesture. Inside over here, you will get amazing amount of options. We have the quick tap. This is the back tap over here. So you can double tap on the back. As you can see, quick tap detected shows. So let me just turn it off but you can of course turn it on and customize it thoroughly if you want to or use it and we have the quickly open camera in the system gestures we have this settings and we do have the swipe to invoke assistant if i swipe up from these corners as you can see the google assistant is working perfectly fine here without any problems we have the left edge right edge customization the pill length you can actually change i have already done that so you are noticing the pill bar is quite long but there is no thickness customization for some reason here and we have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. You can customize that too. Advanced gestures or the extended swipe actions are there. We have the back gesture haptic feedback, the back gesture animation. The full screen gestures are also there. So you can hide the pill bar if you want to. Then we also get the IME button space. So if you don't like that keyboard kind of space below, you can definitely disable this one. We have the two button and three button navigations as well. And we have the one handed mode. And that is actually working perfectly fine. And we have the swipe to screenshot too. That should be working great. We have the edit, delete, share and the Google Lens option. Press and hold power button option is there. There is the hold for assistant if you need that. Then we get the double tap to check phone. We do get the prevent ringing option too. That should work. And we have the system updater. So you can check for updates from right here. But right now I'm on the latest build. We also get the live translate feature of Pixel. And this is actually working perfectly fine if you are going to use that. Right now let me show you the home screen. This is how it looks. And let me show you the settings of it. So from the settings, you can assume this is a pixel launcher over here that is present by default. But the good thing is we do get the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen in this pixel launcher as well. So that's just awesome. To the left of the home screen, we do get the Google's discover page. Those are working great. And swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you the quick setting panel. And as you can see, this is how it looks. And it depends on the wallpaper color. Let me actually go into the wallpaper and styles. And from here, of course, you can change the colors if you want to. And right now, as I have changed it, as you can see, it has changed to a mint green kind of color. So yeah, you can definitely change these however you like it. And here, let me show you the widgets and stuff. This is the Android 12 kind of clock widget. They are working great. And if you're noticing the animations with this bigger clock too, if you're noticing this is working perfectly fine, the Android 12 widgets. And here, if you swipe up, you can actually search for any particular apps in this app drawer just like this. This is how it will look. It, it is a universal kind of search. So yeah, it works great. Also, the app drawer is really, really smooth. No issues whatsoever that I have faced over here. Right now, let me talk about the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like. We have the Wi-Fi toggle, the mobile data toggle, the Bluetooth toggle is there. And talking about the Bluetooth devices, let me show you. You can see the Bluetooth battery stats right there in the quick setting panel. Also, it shows up in the status bar as well. So there you can actually see the battery percentage so yeah that's great we have the flashlight and the dark theme and the auto rotate option is there then we have the night light the hotspot and let me show you more things like the always on display toggle is there the airplane mode is there the nearby share and the screen recorder is also there and if you are noticing those animations of android 12 l they are working perfectly great over here no issues whatsoever we have the heads up disabling or enabling option the battery saver option and the do not disturb the data saver again and we have the reading mode and the Google Home controls. The extra dim feature is there. The sound toggle is there. And here we have the reboot toggle too. So you can directly reboot the recovery by just tapping and holding on it. And we have the Moto Audio. This is the Dolby kind of audio over here. As you can see, Moto Audio tuned by Dolby it shows over here. So you can actually tune the audio however you like it. Of course, I have been using it with the smart audio. And the sound quality overall on this particular ROM was amazing. Yes, it does not come with the Mi Audio Direct kind of stuff. 
but yes it does include this moto audio and the sound quality over here i have to say is really really loud and via speakers via headsets like bluetooth headsets and even the 3.5 headphones works great over here no issues whatsoever even if you're using a wired headset or wireless or if you're just using the speakers we also get the dc dimming and the high brightness mode is there as well if you're noticing it's working fine and the dc dimming you can toggle from right here it takes a second to actually enable it but yeah it works fine and this is how the power menu appears and we do get the advanced reboot from here and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from this power menu of course right now let me talk about the stock camera and stuff so this is the camera that you get by default over here mgc by bsg 8.1.101 kind of camera so yeah the, you are getting a gcam 8 so that's great you get a lot of features like the video stabilization and stuff then the forced 4k 60 fps options are there even 8k option is there i'm not really sure if that will work let me show you we have the 0.66x lens switching option so this is the ultra wide angle lens should be working great also the main sensor is working great and the 2x telephoto zoom lens is working perfectly great so yeah no issues whatsoever with these and we have the front camera working perfectly fine if you're noticing and there is the portrait mode so that should be working great too and if you're gonna take videos you can take like 1080p videos i guess 1080p 30 fps with the front camera and with the rear camera let me actually switch to the main lens i was on the 2x telephoto lens so yeah with the main lens you can actually shoot 1080p 60 fps videos then if you switch to 4k you will only get limited to 30 fps also the night sight option is there and taking a normal photo is pretty fine i would say and yes you can take basic pictures without any problems and they come out to be really really good and you can see the camera so gcam on k20 pro is really optimized there is no problems at all the quality overall over here is awesome and there is no shutter lag at all it takes the pictures instantly no issues whatsoever with the shutter speed or something so that was about the camera right now let's jump into the settings and this is how the settings panel looks like yes it does look beautiful in my opinion here inside cherry settings we get the customizations so of course cherry's voice has been amazing with the customizations and this time it's not different inside status bar we have the double tap to sleep the traffic indicators the clock style changing option then we get the clock and date customization and we have the vault icon vo wi-fi icon customizations and we have the mobile data type icon combined data icons and inside battery we get the battery style changing option you can have this like a right option for the battery style but i have enabled this colored icon not really sure how it works but yeah i haven't seen this icon to be colored for me at least but that's how it is we have the battery percentage position changing option of course let me go back we have the status bar icons headset bluetooth headset icons of course and here we have the quick setting panel customization you can adjust the transparency but for that if you change that you have to actually reboot the system ui and we have the date enabling option for the quick setting panel the privacy kind of stuff then the brightness slider position you can of course change from right here i have been using it with the bottom and this is how it looks like on the quick setting panel we have the auto brightness icon too you can disable that if you want to and inside themes we have the settings layout changing option so you can go with the oxygen os kind of stuff and we have the use black theme this is a pitch black so if you're using the dark theme the whole ui turns pitch black and it looks beautiful of course on this amulet display of k20 pro and the clear all button is there for notifications then if you scroll down more we have the monet theme engine and here you can actually customize these stuff like chroma factor and the white luminance and the custom color you can add and we have the dark theme kind of enabling option and the headline and body font options are there and plethora of fonts that you will get pretty much it just doesn't end then we get the icon packs a lot of icon packs are there and we have the icon shapes too you can change the icon shapes of course if you want to the signal icons you can of course change from right here also there are the wi-fi icons and i have changed that to xperia and with that this is how it looks and of course you can change it between these many options then we get the buttons here we have the on-screen nav bar layout and the invert three button layout is there if you're using those three buttons you can definitely do that here we have the volume steps then the reorient and the long press power button toggle torch that should work just fine and we get the animations here we have the animation style and then we get the animation duration and the screen of animation etc you can change and then we get the lock screen customization the double tap to sleep option is there on the lock screen the charging info also appears of course and the UDFPS customizations are there. We do have the screen of FOD or whenever the screen is off, you can just tap the thing with scanner, it will unlock. But then again, we get all these presets, but this particular area it just lags for some reason, if you're noticing. So yeah, this is how it is, but it's fine. You just need to like actually change the fingerprint scanner, then we get out of this particular area. So that's fine, I guess. Let me actually go back from this fingerprint scanner icons and we get to the animations. Now this area doesn't lag that much, that's cool. 
and of course if you tap on each one it will actually show how the animation will appear so this is great that this actually works fine and yes the thing with scanner speed i will show you later on but yes we get all the customizations that you will need in the power menu we have the advanced reboot and stuff and we have the screenshot settings etc you can enable if you want to then we get the notifications the in call vibration options are there the blink flashlight for incoming call option is there then we have the battery charging light in do not disturb mode you can enable it that's the notification LED on the pop-up camera for charging and stuff and we have the music ticker and the heads up you can of course disable make heads up less annoying option is there two step icons are there in the misc settings we get the charging animation and we have the ignore window secure flag i'm not really sure what that does but yeah we have this allow application downgrade too and the game space also is there if you want to use that and inside about of course you can see the cherry is about and you can donate to the developers from right here so that's pretty much it about the customizations of cherry OS on the redmi k20 pro and here in the display settings this is how it looks like we get the adaptive or auto brightness inside live display we get the rgb control over here let me go back we get the lock screen customization and from here we have the show device control and stuff double line clock and the always show time and info that's the always on display if you scroll down more we have the screen timeout then the dark theme enabling option again the night light you can of course enable from right here then we get the colors changing option like saturated boosted etc presets we get the pocket detection right here we have the allow window level blurs and the blurs are actually working perfectly fine if you're noticing and we have the double tap to wake and the wake up on plug then the display cutout is there for some reason also we get the descending and high brightness mode and then again both are working perfectly fine here in the wallpapers and styles of course you can change the wallpapers i have been using a wallpaper from the wallp app and we have the themed icons and in terms of the app grid you get six by nine that's pretty much funny at this point so up to six by nine but of course i have been using it with the five by five let me go back in the battery settings this is how it looks like we get the percentage right there then the battery usage you can see and we have the pixel battery stats provider and if you scroll down more we get to see the battery temperature the design battery capacity the current battery capacity and the charging cycles as well and with this battery you can see i have got about 708 charging cycles so that's a lot of charging cycles i would say and with that let me show you i have tested with the echo battery app and with this Aqua battery app, I have got about 7 hours and 45 minutes of screen on time. Almost 8 hours of screen on time, I would say. So where did it go? I'm not really sure what happened there. But yeah, 8 hours of screen on time I got almost. So that's pretty awesome, I would say. So battery life should be really, really decent. And the standby time is really awesome over here. And if you disable always on display, it will just increase even more. So the battery life overall on this particular ROM was amazing. I have no issues whatsoever with the battery life on this ROM. Inside health, for some reason, it doesn't show the battery health for me yet. But yes, I have gone through almost three charging cycles on this particular ROM. Not really sure why the battery health is not appearing. But yeah, this is how it is. But overall, the battery life has been good enough on this particular ROM. Talking about the charging, yes, the fast charging is working fine. But my battery health is quite not great. So that's why the fast charging sometimes doesn't work while I'm using the device. But yeah, that might be the case just for me. Not really sure about that. I can't really confirm that because my battery is really old. So that may be the reason for it. But if you have replaced your battery or if your device is newer than me or if you have less charging cycles than me, definitely you should get enough amount of fast charging. In the sound and vibration, we have the media call ring, etc. volume controls. And this is how the volume panel looks like. And this animation just notice how beautiful it looks. And you can expand the volume panel just like this. You can put the profiles to mute or something from here and if you tap here you can actually change the output device to phone speaker or the bluetooth headset that you're using also you can actually increase or decrease the volume from right here so this is great we have the left volume panel then if you scroll down more we have the volume panel timeout too then we have the vibrate for calls and the ringtone vibration pattern changing option if you scroll down more we have the touch vibration part of volume control the screenshot sound also we get the clear speaker option now it's time we jump into the security of course in the face unlock and fingerprint scanner settings inside face unlock we don't have the swiping up kind of thing but it is there by default like you have to swipe up if you are going to use the face unlock i think so that's how it works right now and i have added two fingerprints so right now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed quickly here I double tap and this is how the always on display looks like. Of course, it looks beautiful and I can just tap on the fingerprint scanner and as you can see, it unlocks fairly fast, I would say. So, yep, it is a little slower than what I'm used to from the ROMs like Evolution X. But yeah, I would say it unlocks, but you have to keep the finger over there for a little while. 
if you are noticing yes it works fine but yes it takes a moment if you don't like keep the finger right there for a little longer it doesn't unlock so yeah once i double tap and it's in the lock screen it unlocks fine i would say it, the speed is pretty great but from the always on display itself if you're noticing i have to actually keep the finger over there so that's how the finger scanner works and let me show you the face unlock right now i just double tap to the lock screen and this is how the lock screen looks like and i have to swipe up over here to actually use the face unlock just notice this i just swipe up and look at the device and as you can see it unlocks let me try one more time So yes, the face unlock speed is of course slower because of the motorized front camera, but yeah, that's how it is. And here in the screen lock settings, we have the quick unlock option and the scramble pin layout. The power button instantly locks and we have the app lock over here. Let me actually unlock this and show you we get to see the protected apps over here. You can actually search for any particular app. Of course, the Google Photos is still there. That's great. Of course, you can lock particular apps like Telegram and stuff. And here, let me show you. Let me just lock a random app like 17 track. And here, if I try to open that, this is how the UI looks like. And this UI, the whole screen turns white or dark depending on your theme. That's how it is as of right now. And if I tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it has unlocked. So yes, the app lock is working perfectly fine here without any problems. Also, we have the biometrics and the auto lock timeout and the collapse notification option right here. So right now, let me just do one thing. Let's go into the recent panel. And I have opened already these two apps like YouTube and Twitter over here. And in the recent panel, if I go here and tap on the icon, then we can jump into the split top. And with the split top feature, this is working great. I can switch between these apps like simultaneously up or down and I can scale them just like this. And when I go home and open some other apps just like this, let me actually show you over here. If I go into the recent panel, these two apps stay together. So yes, the split top is working great and it works 100% of the time on Android 12 L and this is one of the best features of Android 12 L and it should work really, really great. Now let's talk about the basic things like safety net. Of course, it passes right out of the box. So you can use banking apps without any problems right out of the box. And the DRM info stays as L1 over here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. It should not be an issue. Also talking about the whole UI performance and overall the UI stays really really smooth. I haven't seen any such issues on this particular ROM and overall the whole UI stays really buttery smooth and the whole UI if you're noticing if you're scrolling or something the whole UI stays smooth. No problems so far with performance that I have seen while daily driving on this particular ROM and here at the Android and Geekbench score on this particular ROM with a CPU stress test. So that wraps up this video guys. Thank you so much for watching this video on Cherry Swiss version 3.7 on the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me in the comments what do you guys think. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from Kerry and Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.